All right, good morning, Savannah. This is the Savannah Business Showcase. I'm your host, Taraz. And this morning, we have a very special guest, uh, Jim Helgren of Oasis Irrigation and Lighting. Uh, Jim is the owner of Oasis Irrigation and Lighting, which has been serving Savannah and the Lennigs at Skidaway Island for over 13 years. Uh, Jim is also a member and leader of the Savannah Business Referral Team, which is a local team of business professionals that meet each week with the purpose of gaining business. Uh, now, Jim, before I let you introduce yourself, um, I want to start this a little differently. So I will give you, you said you were nervous about promoting yourself, <laughs> so I'm going to get the hard stuff out of the way. All right. Um, so you, you walk, and I'm doing this because uh, lately there's been a lot of business owners that just want to promote themselves, but the bigger purpose of the thing is of the show is to uh, motivate and inspire local entrepreneurs sure. as well. Yep. All right, so uh, here's, here's the question. All right, you're walking down the road in your neighborhood, um, a little kid comes up to you and says, Jim, you're my hero. How can I be like you? Right. So in, in the language that a 10 or 12 year old will understand, um, what does it take to be Jim Helgren? What does it take to be me? Hmm. Um, stumped me out the gate. Now, <laughs> as far as, you know, being an entrepreneur or starting your own business, I would say it, you have to find something that you want to wake up to and do in the morning. You got to have a passion for it. You have to have a desire for it. You don't necessarily have to be good at it when you start. Right. Owning your own business or whatnot, that means you're going to make a lot of mistakes along the way. You got to learn from them. But ultimately, success relies on you and your shoulders alone, really. Mm. You can have two employees. You can have 20 employees. But if you're the boss, it falls on you. So it's got to be something you want to do and like to do. Mm. Wake up in the morning and be excited to go to work. If not, you're, it's going to be a tough thing. So I've always done kind of what I wanted to do, something that I've liked to do. Uh, about 26, 27 years old, I started thinking that way. Yeah. So that's maybe how, how I'm me is just, that looks exciting. Let's do it. <laughs> awesome. Okay. All right, so, so tell people a little bit more about Oasis Irrigation and Lighting. Uh, we handle all your landscape irrigation needs. We will install a system. We will repair a system. We will audit a system. Most importantly, the last few years with water conservation really coming to the forefront, we'll show you how you can run your system much more efficiently and for a lot less money than you currently do. And we also handle landscape lighting. Um, all the accent lighting you see, a lot of people spend a lot of money on their landscapes. Nice to see them at night too, or make that a part of your landscape, an area you can sit at with some accent lighting, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. But really water conservation is a very big thing in our line of business right now awesome okay so um so why 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 the niche the niche of irrigation instead of just lawn care in general like what what opportunities did you see there i've actually been down the lawn care road a little bit dabbled in that a little bit and kind of bluntly it just wasn't how my brain's wired mm -hmm. how that business works irrigation to me i like i like the math of it mm -hmm. there's there's a lot of math of it if you're gonna build it and build it correctly but primarily our focus is repairs you know nowadays we're kind of a throwaway society if when it breaks you throw it away and buy a new one from appliances to cars to anything right well you can't do that with a sprinkler system mm. so it's fun to go out there when somebody says my system doesn't work and I don't know what's going on mm. well that's a challenge I look at it as a challenge so I gotta fix it yeah I don't know what's going on we gotta start digging holes and tracing wiring so um, as far as that it's just there seems to be a huge need for it. Well, there has been 13 years. We're still going strong. So uh, we branch out into a few other things here and there, but you know, always come back to sprinklers. Yeah. It's what we know best and what we do best. That's, okay. That's, that's awesome. And I, that's another reason I wanted to have you on the show is because that's uh, your, your career, your profession is one they don't tell you about in high school. You don't know, know. <laughs> you know they and don't. it's honestly, it's not one that I looked for or strived for. I sort of, fell into this this was I had sold another business I had was kind of done with that and I was just kind of sitting around deciding what I wanted to do and a friend of actually my a client of my wife her dad was helping this guy do sprinklers on the side this guy who did it on the side he said hey you're not doing anything get off your butt and come out and help us we got a huge <laughs> job we need some guys to come out so I just went out and dug trenches for a couple of days yeah 
A couple months later, I was running a crew. A couple months, uh, a couple years later, that guy wanted to go in a different route, so I kind of took over the sprinklers, and here I am 13 years later. That's awesome. Again, find something you like and do it. Yeah. What did you do before that you, the business you sold? What got me to the this area was in 1997, I bought a small property management business over on Hilton Head. Okay. Which got us down into the area. That's what I had been doing in Colorado after college kind of based on my degree and whatnot if you actually use your degree these days <laughs> right um so um i had done that for three four years and we had moved actually over to this side of the river and it was just the commute was getting kind of boring it was time to go so mm. i moved on mm. awesome okay well let's keep working back then so All like right. where, uh so tell tell the people like where you're from uh what you know, where are you from? How'd you end up in Savannah? I, I was, uh, that's a long story. I'll try and give <laughs> you the brief points. I was born in Wisconsin. Then I made the traitorous, moved and, the traitorous move and went to Minnesota. I was only four at the time, so it was all my dad's fault. Uh, I grew up in Minnesota. Love the Midwest. Love it. I probably would move back there if I could, but my wife is not a fan of the cold. She's a San Diego girl, so uh, we visit. Um, went to college out in Colorado at Colorado State. Um, spent a couple years afterwards uh, up in some ski towns, sort of working, having some fun, trying to figure out what I wanted to do, and that's actually where I met my wife. Um, then we got the itch to kind of just go out and see some other stuff. So a few other stops along the way, we wound up down in, in 97, mm -hmm. the job in Hilton Head. So we've kind of been around, um, but we've been down here now since then, and, you know, who knows what the next adventure will right. be or when it will be, but oh. I'm sure there'll be another chapter somewhere. I'm sure. I'm sure. Okay. Um, so tell, uh, let's skip to the business referral team. So tell me a little bit about, about it. The Savannah business referral team. Um, I had never been in a networking group before. I was asked by a current member to come as a guest last year, about a year and a half ago. Okay. I was a little leery. I'd heard different things, good and bad, about networking groups. Um, I went in and immediately thought these are really good people. Mm -hmm. I love the people in that group. Everybody's very, it's very relaxed and down to earth. Um, I don't have much to compare it to, but other people who are in the group who have been in other networking groups mm -hmm. seem to enjoy this a lot more for our professional yet relaxed atmosphere in our meetings. Right. Um, we all generally like one another too, in and out of business. So, um, you know, it's been a great group, lots of referrals moving around. The group's been growing. Um, and I'm, I'm so glad that I got asked to, asked to join. It's great. Yeah. 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 And, that, and that's how we met initially. Yeah. Uh, yep. Cause and I, you, I yeah, came you, one day. Yeah. You came in as a guest and immediately I thought, Hey, there's an idea, Yeah, you know, talk about myself on the radio. And <laughs> then I had to think about it. I was like, Oh no, I have to talk about myself, but <laughs> Um, but it, it's things like that. As being a small business owner, you don't realize how a connection just that you may not even know can connect you with four other people right. and more work. Um, uh, you know, there's just there's so many things that come from a networking group that I never even imagined could happen. It's right. really opened my eyes to. Uh, you know, and made me more successful as a business person. Yeah, so definitely, definitely. And I've, I've been to a lot of networking events. So it's the Savannah business referral team is really great. It's in a lot of ways. Uh, it's um, you guys just have a, a energy, a connection that's uh, pretty, pretty rare for networking groups. It's always business, business, business. You're always handing out business cards and you never really meet a person, but you guys meet every week. So it's able, you're able to build um, a relationship with each other that yeah. you won't get anywhere else. Which yeah. Is, which and is we also, awesome. we put, um, we're, we do it a little differently than everybody else. We're very big on attendance at the meetings, and we try and get together every week with one another outside the meeting, mm -hmm. you know, have a little sit down with somebody else and, you know, learn a little bit about them and a little bit, you know, deeper knowledge of their business and how you can maybe, you know, send them some business. So right. Right. it's fun. It's a good time. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, When I lived in Chicago, I started a, a Chicago mastermind meetup. And it grew pretty large. It grew to about about 600 people in the first wow. year. Okay. Yeah, that's huge. But it, I was only getting, I only did it once a month. And every, um, you know, every meeting, we only had like 20 or 30 people show up. Okay. But it was still, you know, it was still a great event. And it, it was hard getting like people to come back the second time because it was so far apart, you know. But yep. so I, I think that every week yeah. thing adds to it without yeah. a doubt. Well, and it shows a commitment to everybody else in the group, too. Right. 
right. you know, if I want to send you business, I need to know you're, you know, you're a committed type of person. Mm-hmm. So, and if you can make a meeting every weekend or every week, then it says a lot. Yep. Very true. So, um, what type of, uh, who's, who, what type of people should look to join the Savannah business pro team? <sighs> It's really anybody. I mean, we have we have contractors, we have finance people, we have small business owners, managers, um, you know, any kind of business that you would like to grow your business through referrals and be able to refer yourself, you know, other people in the group to current clients you have. There's really no set parameters. I mean, obviously, we only have one person kind of, you know, per that business in mm-hmm. the group, but... Um, there's really no qualms about it, but I would say if you're interested in it, space is going to be limited here pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> we are filling up, and, and we try. We try and keep our meet, we want to keep our meetings at, at the allotted time and whatnot. So mm-hmm. eventually, we'll get to a point where we can't be effective as a networking group if we get too big. So. Right, right. But no, there's really no. I mean, there's you know just anybody. Hey, if you're if, yeah. you're, if you're in a business and you wanna you wanna grow, come see us. Yeah. <laughs> Got you. Uh, so everybody out there, Jim's being a little modest because he's actually the leader of, of the of the just, referral team. Ju- just for this year, I just run the meetings. That's all. <laughs> so, so he more gets than that. To, so he gets to tell people to sit down and shut up when they talk too long. Eh, just uh, a little bit, but we try and be nice about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, what advice do you have for people who uh, are struggling with network, or like, is is Savannah different for networking than other cities? Um, I I don't. I, I would think it's probably some similarities and some differences. I, I've been in Savannah for what 20 years now, mm-hmm. and this is the only place I've ever Savannah, Hilton Head, and Bluffton. It's the only place I've ever owned a business or mm-hmm. ran a business. So, um, if it's different to other places, I, I I would assume everything's different, kind of based on your location and how people do things and 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 whatnot. But um, I know it's effective. Okay. I mean, for somebody who had never been in a networking group before and hadn't really thought about it, mm-hmm. I was very surprised at how quickly you can make connections. And, you know, it's pretty fun when you're on a job and your client asks you, hey, do you happen to know anybody who uh, you know, can fix my air conditioning or fix my plumbing? It's like, you know what? I do. I know a great guy. Yeah. And, and it just makes that connection with you and your client that much better, mm-hmm. especially if you can give them a quality person who they can call and, you know, get get something else taken care of. That's true. That's that's a nice feeling. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any uh, advice for people looking to get out there and put themselves out there and network? Um, depending on your business, you got to you have to if you want to own a business, you know, there has to be some self-promotion. You can be the best at whatever you want to do. But if nobody knows what you do you're you're going to struggle i'm you know i'm late 40s don't let the baby face fool you here (laughs) um so uh, you know to get out there business now is totally different than five years and even 10 years ago with the advent of social media right i mean when i started my first business the main thing was to have a yellow pages ad Mm. how much money were you going to spend on your yellow pages ad and how big was it going to be because that's how people found you Mm. I, I don't, I mean, do we even get phone books anymore? I, I, I personally haven't had a landline in my house for probably seven years. <laughs> right, yeah, same here. So now it's it's Facebook and it's Twitter and it's having a good website for your business. And then and then all, all the the social media apps, the, the good neighbor, and I can't mm. think of all the names where, you know, these neighborhoods have apps where they talk amongst each other. So mm. that's good and it's also bad. So you got to... You know, really, I think it's good overall because it really keeps, you know, us businesses on our toes. Because if you go out and do something really bad and treat somebody bad, a whole lot of people are going to hear about it yeah, that's true. in a very short amount of time. That's true. <laughs> Which is good for the customer. Yeah, good for the customers. <laughs> right. And, it, you know, it's it's kind of a double-edged sword. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been very slow to, to join the social media crowd, but I'm just getting into that now in the last couple of months for business. Right. Still never do it personally. <laughs> my, my wife keeps up with our friends on Facebook and tells me what I need to know. So, yeah, yeah, I, I don't, yeah, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of social media either. I was born, you know, right, you know, before the internet. Yep. You know, so I still remember, you know, dial up and AOL CDs. Oh and, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. not, I, I remember the life before the internet. So, and, it was some beauty to that, you know. Yeah. Well, think about it now. Do you, do you know like your best friend's phone number, or do you just know how to hit his name in your phone? I have 
two numbers memorized. It's yeah. one, one best friend and my wife. Yeah, I <laughs> same thing. We all do that. We probably have 100, 150 numbers in our phone. We Easily. know two of them. I can remember all my buddy's phone numbers growing up. Really? You know, it was a small town. We all had the same first three nu numbers, and mm -hmm. then everybody else was a four-digit after that. I can still remember 15, 20 of my friend's phone numbers because wow. you called them every day. Yeah. yeah. Now I have no clue. You're right. You know your wife's phone number and maybe one other person. Right. And that's it. That's it. So. That's it. Okay, so... um. <laughs> So what what's what works for you really well in OSS irrigation and lighting as far as finding customers? Word of mouth. Okay. That I have found that to be the best thing ever, and that's and that's good because word of mouth is related to how you do your job. Mm, mm -hmm. If I'm going to do a good job for this person and they're happy and feel like they were treated right and got good value, they're going to tell their friend mm -hmm. or their neighbor. Every you know everybody's has some social aspect to their life. And I think Savannah is a very big word of mouth kind of town. Yeah. You know, a lot of people definitely. have been here for a long time, lots of family and friends and, you know, the circles get bigger and bigger. So word of mouth is big. And other, other than that, it's almost kind of, you know, you've got social media, which is broad, you know, a broad brush for everything. You've got word of mouth. And then, you know, every town I'm sure has their own little, you know, niche marketing areas. Mm hmm you know, maybe a little neighborhood has their own little magazine or a, a newspaper, you know, and if that's an area you want to be, that's a good place to advertise. But word of mouth, y you can't beat it. Right. Yeah. So so word of mouth builds like a snowball. But in the beginning, you don't really have that. Nope. The avenue. So what did you do when you first started to really uh, gain momentum? Um, oof, 13 years ago, that was a long time ago. I'm trying to remember what I had for breakfast. No, um, you know, there's going to be some times you just have to be ready for it to be a little thin. Mm -hmm. Um, in irrigation, it's when I first started out as a very seasonal business, yeah. obviously, because people shouldn't water conservation. You should not to be watering in the winter months down here. You really yeah. don't need to. But so, you know, we'd go really busy March to September. And then that first winter rolled around is like, hmm. <laughs> so I, me personally, I found a couple of side jobs that were totally unrelated to Oasis Irrigation, but it was things I could do to, you know, just keep paying the bills and right. things would trickle in and eventually it builds up. And before you know it, you got too much work yeah. and then you got to hire employees and then you start going down that road. Mm. So that's awesome. That's awesome. Everybody, okay. everybody starts at a different pace. That's true. Some people can jump in and boom, they're gone and they're making tons of money and, and everything's great. Other people, it's a little more slow, a little more organic growth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think they say like an overnight success takes about five years Yeah, to have an overnight success. Exactly. Or they always used to say, um, in the, my wife's a, a horse person, been in the horse world her whole life. And okay. the old adage was, how do you make a small fortune in the horse business? Start with a large fortune. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> there is no such thing as an overnight success. Yeah, I, don't, you know? yeah, I definitely there just don't think isn't. so either. It's, it's still a lot of hard work at the end of the day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, next question. Uh, so, I don't really know. What's, <laughs> what, like, what, like what else can you say about Oasis then? Oh, like, so, so you're into the conservation part of things. Like yes. Is, is water, so we're right on the ocean, but is water conservation a big deal in Savannah? It should be a bigger deal, and it should be a bigger deal everywhere. Mm -hmm. Savannah is no different. Forever, the U.S. is always in most other places. You know, water was just always a given when we grew up. You turn on the tap, water was always there. You don't think about it ever. Right, right. And it's always been a very small bill in, in your utility bill stack and that's starting to change mm. you know water is uh you know we are um lucky to be on this side of the planet where we've got a lot more fresh water than anybody else does for the most part but mm. we still need to conserve it so we're getting there it's like everything like recycling and solar power it's slowly catching on but we always overwater. everybody overwaters yeah. the yard that's just a common thing and it's just it's you know people just need to learn you just don't need that much water for your grass to and your shrubs to look great. Got you. Okay. And there's tons of ways to do that. Some are very simple. Some are very complex, and we'll take we'll handle all of them. Okay. What are some <laughs> of the, so tell me some of the simple and complex ways. The easiest one is I bet everybody could turn their irrigation timer down twenty percent, and your okay. yard would never know. Hmm. Literally, everybody could turn their system down twenty percent, and hmm. it takes five minutes, and it costs zero dollars. And 20% savings on your water bill across the board. Mm. 
Um, you can, a lot of older systems are very inefficient. Mm -hmm. Older heads put out the wrong kind of water in the wrong type of place. Mm. Um, you know, irrigation's like everything else. Technology is, is keeping it new and more advanced, bigger, better, faster, stronger, wh you know, whatever word you want to use there. Right. Um, you can renovate systems, put in newer heads that are much more efficient, low flow heads. Um, drip irrigation is a very big thing lately. Okay. Um, instead of just spraying beds with water that go everywhere, including the flowers and not the flower part, parts <laughs> of the bed, mm -hmm. drip irrigation drops water right at the base of the flowers. And hmm. that's it. Nowhere else. Very efficient. Uses a ton less water. Um, you can, uh, with the advent of smartphones now, you can get a controller that you can run from your phone that will link to satellites and pull down weather data and it will <laughs> adjust your sprinkler time each and every day based on current weather wow okay. so if you say you set had a zone and you set it for 30 minutes in the summer and as it goes later and later in the summer and it gets cooler and cooler that will automatically adjust itself down wow. to eventually come november and december it'll just turn it off or run it for one minute whatever kind mm -hmm. of control you have and then it will gradually raise it back up in the spring that's crazy you know you can do that now everything's everything's got a computer chip in it <laughs> yeah that's it's true just, it's how fancy do you want to get yeah i mean it's i can sit here right now and pick up my phone and i can turn my sprinklers on at home <laughs> or i can or i can turn them off yeah uh, you know, if somebody calls and says, hey, your water is leaking in your yard, you've got a busted pipe. Well, I can I can go in and, and shut mine off. That's crazy. So that's, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. And that's something you can hook up. So we're buying a home soon. There uh, you go. I think it has an irrigation system. Pretty sure. Uh, is that like, can you add these to an older system? Yes. yes. Easily? You, okay. you, you can retrofit any system. It doesn't matter who who put it in or what the make and model of it is. It's all interchangeable any system can be renovated wow and generally speaking most people look at the irrigation clock on their wall and they see the brand name mm -hmm. and they say well i have this kind of a system you probably don't that's the <laughs> clock they put on the wall uh, okay but the valves in the ground and the heads they're probably a different manufacturer it's all interchangeable gotcha and yes you you can retrofit any system to a more efficient more you know a better system too that's pretty cool. Easily done. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Uh, what, so once again, let's, let's jump around some. Sure. So, so what did you major in in college? It was, it was the School of Natural Resources Management. Okay. And it was the, the concentration was commercial recreation and tourism. Okay. It was kind of the business side. If I went the public side, Colorado State was park ranger and you'd become a park ranger. So it's kind of learning about running your own business okay more related to the tourism field last couple of years were kind of you know business class heavy but more you know recreation resources management so okay so it kind of relates to irrigation yeah well, uh, it kind of relates to more running a business okay. aspect to it uh, you know i guess it's college <laughs> you know maybe we paid should have paid a little more attention but you know we did well so right we did good enough right do, do you have kids no 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 kids okay no nope. but right. i have been married 21 years gotcha Got gotcha. you. Okay. So that makes running a, bit, running a business a little easier, I guess. It is. A, yes, it is a little easier for me. Um, we do some different things. We like to travel a lot and whatnot, so we're in and out. But, yeah, you know, if I need to if I need to work till 8 o'clock at night, I generally don't have. Not a huge deal. Yeah, it's, I don't have that huge commitment of getting the kids from school, this, that, or the other right. thing. So. Right, right. Yeah, business still isn't easy. No. <laughs> but no. <laughs> it's probably a little less, uh, yeah. less, less hard. Okay. All right, uh, let's do a couple more questions, then we'll go to a break. Sure. Um, so, from the Midwest, moved to Savannah. Uh, what, what's keeping you in Savannah? Um, I'd say right now it's the job. Um, my wife is also, like I said, she's a horse person, so we spend a lot of time up in, actually, up in Aiken, South Carolina. Mm. Crazy horse town. Mm -hmm. um, so that keeps us here a lot. And the job, you know, I, I like doing what I do, so... Not gonna say I'll do it forever. Who knows? But yeah. you know, it's fun and we like it. So, have you ever thought about expanding to other other places? Or you always get that bug. Yeah, uh, you, you go up and down. I've I've added a few things in here and there into the business. Some worked out, some didn't. Um, the previous business I had that kind of went up and up and up. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. If I was ten years younger, I might be crazily into the expansion phase again. <laughs> but 
I kind of like where we're at now. We're running pretty good. It's a well-oiled machine. Mm -hmm. There's always room for, you know, growth. Yeah. But I think I might be done with the crazy expansion or, you know, franchise or anything. Yeah, that's gotcha. nah, nah, that's that's out of the picture. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, so I, I imagine like a property management company, it's a little easier to scale it uh, versus, a, you know, your irrigation company. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, part of the reason I've always – my biggest backer in doing anything like this was always my father. Mm. And I was 25, 26. So one day he just kind of popped up. He said, you know what? You should, you should think about going to work for yourself. Mm. I didn't know if that meant I didn't work well with others and he was trying to, you know, be polite to me <laughs> right. or, or what, but you know, he was always, he was always the, the guy saying, that's a good idea. Go for it. And you know, my, you know, my biggest um, cheerleader, I, I, I don't know what word to put mm -hmm. in there. And you know, for me, it's it's nice because if I want to work real hard for four days a week, then I can take a day or two off if mm -hmm. I need to. You mm -hmm. know, it gives me the flexibility to do what I want to do in in my free time when you actually get free time. Yeah, so. yeah, I, and I agree. I yeah. definitely agree. It's, it's been hard for me. Like my uh, my wife's friends and family are asking her what I. She gets tired like explaining, trying to explain <laughs> what I do, uh, but. I, I can't do anything else because I just love entrepreneurship. Yeah. I love being Yeah, and you my wake up in the morning and that's what excites you and you enjoy doing it. Right. So, right, right, right. And and I, I, I like it's it's different every day. Mm hmm It's not not to say that a lot of people don't enjoy and love an office job. That's just not me. That's not how my brain's wired. Mm -hmm. I, I've always been outdoors. Every job I've had has been outdoors. Um Literally, except for one six-month stretch, every job I've had <laughs> since I left college is, you know, graduated college has been related to being outside every day. Yeah. So. Yeah. What What do you think it is about you that that makes you uh, that makes you different a little bit? That makes you want to have a job like that? Um, you know, I was an outdoor kid growing up. Um, just always playing in the neighborhood, running around. Um, had a great neighborhood growing up, all a bunch of kids my age and my brother's age. I, we, you know, we were just a bunch of hooligans, really. <laughs> um, I just, I've always loved the outdoors. Yeah. Um, playing sports, boating. I, I grew up on a lake. Everybody grows up on a lake in Minnesota. Yeah. So that's, that's yeah. no big deal there. Land of a thousand um, lakes. I've just always loved the outdoors and I did, you know, have the freedom of movement, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I've probably never thought too much about that, but. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know. I think I'd go nuts if I had to sit behind a desk for a couple of days. <laughs> yeah. and, and again, that's yeah. just me. I just maybe I just. I always remember getting up in the morning and hopping on my bike and taking off. And you know, summer, summer, or coming home from school and it was like, where are we going? What are we doing until the sun goes down? And you know, mom calls and tells it's time for dinner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. I, yeah. I'm right there with you. I probably grew up in a little worse neighborhood than you, but I'm right there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right there with you. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, all right, well, that's a great spot to take a break, and we'll come right back in just a moment with the lightning round. So everybody stick around. Uh, once again, I'm here with Jim Helgren of Oasis Irrigation and Lighting here in Savannah. So see you guys in a second. All right, welcome back, Savannah, to the Savannah Business Showcase. I'm here once again with Jim Helgren of Oasis Irrigation and Lighting, uh, and we're going to put him through the lightning round. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. All right, so... With the lightning round, you can answer them as long or as short as you want to. whole bunch of questions. We'll see how many we can get through. All right. Um, how have you approached failure in life? Failure is inevitable. You have to learn from it. Owning uh, three different businesses through my life, I've made a lot of mistakes. Try to learn from them and try not to make it the second time. But failure is going to happen. What did you want to be as a kid and how does that relate to your current business? You know, I don't, I was never the kid who grew up and wanted to be the astronaut or the fireman or something. I never had that. Um, how it relates to now, I, I'm not really sure. I'm just, you know, happy in what I'm doing. But, you know, every job and business I've had was never anything I thought about growing up. Mm. It's opportunities presented themselves, so I ran with them. Who influenced you early in life and who's your mentor now? <sighs> I don't think I have a mentor right now. Um, my father would have been my mentor, would have been the answer. He passed away about three years ago. He was always my biggest support staff, hmm. I guess you could say, going into businesses and running ideas by him. He was always kind of a, a little wild card in, in his adult life, too, with businesses. So, <laughs> um, I, don't, 
if I had somebody I looked up to growing up, I don't. I played a lot of sports. I probably put, you know, had some false promise of an athlete or something, but yeah. nothing's coming to me. Okay. Um, what What did you play? Um, back when you played multiple sports in high school, it's entirely different now. <laughs> And in Minnesota, it was a little limited. I was a football guy in the fall, a basketball guy in the winter, and track in the spring. Okay. All that right. was pretty much it for a guy. Either you or you played baseball in the spring. Mm-hmm. So. Um, do, you, do you have kids, and what are you going to teach your children about uh, business? Uh, actually, we do not have kids. So we have a couple of very spoiled nieces. Well, actually, if they played their cards right, things would be better for them because there's not a lot of nieces out there. Um, but no, uh, kids, for a few reasons, were not not in the cards for us. Okay. So, what are you going to teach uh, your nieces? Or well, I'm going to teach my I teach my nieces everything their mom and dad don't want them to know. <laughs> I mean, somebody we all have our roles to play, and somebody's got to be the crazy uncle in the family. So that's my job. Uh, how many siblings do you have? I have two older brothers. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So third child, that's why you're the wild card. Yep. Okay. Uh, what have you had to sacrifice in order to start your business? Hmm. Probably would be time, I think, would be the most measurable thing I've sacrificed. Um, I've actually made a lot of friends and relationships through starting a business that I might not have had before, but it is all-encompassing. I mean, you have to do the work during the day and then you're thinking about it at night and you're billing and bookkeeping and all the stuff that goes with it. So I would say time is the biggest thing. Free time mm-hmm. is the biggest thing you sacrifice. It has to be managed well. <laughs> True. Uh, what's the one thing in your business that drains you of energy and what's the one thing that excites you? Um, I'm a little glutton for punishment. So the excitement is I love getting the call when somebody's already tried to fix something and they didn't fix it. Mm. So now I know I got a, I got something that's a little off the beaten path, and I love trying to figure that out. I was the weird kid in high school and college who liked to take a test. I was like, <laughs> great, challenge me. <laughs> right. Maybe I know I didn't study yeah. as well as I should have, so I know it's going to be a big challenge today, but I like the challenge. Um, what was it? The, the, the thing that – excites you about your business no that was the excitement what okay was the what's, what's the one thing that drains you oh, it drains me well the the short answer is the heat in the summer I mean, <laughs> physically drains you after a while it's august we're all dead um let's see it's probably just the all the ancillary stuff that has comes with running a business that's not it's the stuff that kind of runs you instead of me running the business. Mm -hmm. And I like doing the work. I like meeting with the clients and that stuff, but it's all the little small accounting, accounting, payroll taxes. I love my accountant. Best money ever spent. Also, I have to get his name back. (laughs) Uh, What's something that you consume religiously? Uh, It could be a blog, TV show, a food, uh, podcast, anything? Well, I, I don't, I, I would have said donuts about a year ago, but I've just actually lost 50 pounds in the last oh, get year. Get out of here. So, well, congratulations so I used that. to consume a lot of junk food. Yeah. Um, I'm a big reader. Um, don't watch much TV. Never have been a big TV guy, but I read a lot, all sorts of different things. So I probably consume too many books. Okay. All right. <laughs> what is a uh, favorite book What's your, or top two? You know, I've read too many to have a top, um, but I love reading military history, Okay. Um, American history. I just read a book on the creation of the Panama Canal. Mm. I mean, good grief. We think we have it hard now. Yeah. I mean, we have, you know, such a short memory span. I, you know, I love a good, you know, little fiction, just take your brain away kind of mm-hmm. a book, but I'll read, I, I read a ton of different stuff. What was the, what was the book on the Panama Canal? Um, shoot, I can't think of it. It was the one you know, I went on Amazon. I was curious about that. I saw a documentary or something on the Panama Canal. I was like, yeah. I think I'd like to read about that. That's what I'll do. I'll see something. Okay. I was like, I need to see more. I need to know more about that. Got you. And I went on Amazon and looked for the ones that were widely reviewed yeah. or well reviewed. I can't, I can't even think of the title now, but awesome. okay. it was just the amazing that they did that with basically shovels and pickaxes. Have you ever, I don't know if you're a podcast listener or not, but, um, Dan Carlin's hardcore history. Have you ever heard of that? I've heard of it, but I'm not I'm not a big podcast guy. Okay. 
I've, okay. got, I've had satellite radio in my vehicle since it came out, and that's pretty much where I yeah. where I tune tune out when I need to tune out. It's something on the radio. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, well, if you ever do pick up a podcast or you decide to download it on your phone, definitely check that out first. I think you'll like that. Okay, he goes really in depth. I've actually mentioned it on the podcast on the radio show before, but uh, it's it's a great show. It's a great show. Okay. He does a lot of cool stuff, and uh, it's awesome. Um, what's something most people don't know about you? Ah, something that most people don't know about me. That's vaguely interesting would have to be the other side of that equation. <laughs> um, I lived in New Zealand for a year. Okay. Went to, on a study abroad program for six months and managed to stretch that to a year before my visa was out and they told me I had to leave or get a job. <laughs> so that's probably where I learned a lot about growing up too. I don't know. Awesome. That's pretty cool. So um, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live? Oh, I couldn't pick one spot. Okay. My wife and I love to travel. That's, that's, our, that's our thing. So I was lucky growing up with my family, with all the boys. I, my dad had a motorhome, mm. uh, and we traveled the country, summer nice. breaks and whatnot in a motorhome. My wife grew up uh, in an airline family, so she's had a much broader spectrum of travel, but we, try, we travel as much as we can. Mm. Um, so I don't know. Probably somewhere in a mountain somewhere, but it could be in the, uh, you know, in the Alps, the Himalayas. I yeah. don't know, but I'd probably wind up in a mountain town somewhere. Okay. What was the last experience that made you a stronger person? <sighs> mm, big picture, it would probably be with my father passing about three mm. years ago because my mom had passed the year before. Mm. And that was the realization that, okay, you don't have your parents anymore to fall back on, to ask a question to. My family's very small, so we all talk amongst each other. Everybody knows what's going on, and suddenly you lose that. And it's like, ooh, I got to make my own decisions yeah, now. Yeah. Got to, you know, kind of put on my big boy pants, and I can't run something by to whether you just need to hear an affirmation or make sure, yep, it's a dumb idea, but I need to make sure somebody else thinks it's a dumb idea. But that was probably changed my life because, you, you know, everybody's going to go through that at some point or That's another. That's true. And being in the small business, my dad was always a part of that decision making and helping me out. So that had to had to change my thought process on mm -hmm. a lot of things. Makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, I, I know if nobody else is listening to this, my mom's listening. So uh, I love you, mom. There you go. <laughs> there you go. You can't tell your parents that enough because you know right. what? Someday they're not going to be there, whether it's expected or unexpected. And everybody I've talked to after going through that always wishes they would have said more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what story does your family always tell about you? What st oh, that's a good one. What story do they always tell about me? Um, the one my parents would probably have told is growing up, I was a big thumb sucker. Okay. We had a family friend who was an orthodontist who just couldn't wait to get me in the chair for braces. Yeah, I was going to, I was, I was, I stopped sucking my thumb and I never needed braces. But when I did that, I had bent my teeth or something. I couldn't say the, like a CH. I mm -hmm. couldn't say like cherry or chocolate. It always came out as an N. Mm. So it'd be nary or knocklet. I just, I had a little speech impediment almost. Yeah. And when I stopped sucking my thumb, so my mom loved to tell me that inappropriate story. Um, the stories my brothers would tell about me, I probably can't say in this nice little family family special here. Uh, so here's a new one. What's the best gift you've ever received? Oh, man. Or, or given, if that helps. Ooh, given. I know that because I did that last year. Okay. You know, everybody, you're, you're roughly my age. We go back. We have piles of old VHS tapes and high 8-millimeter tapes of us growing up that our parents took when those big handheld video I, I remember those, yeah. Hit. They're all sitting in our, well, we're going to do something with them. Nobody ever does something with them. So all of last year, I took those and I put them all on a little, you know, flash drive. Mm-hmm. All the stuff from us growing up, and I gave one to both my brothers at Christmas. Yeah. And boy, there's some stuff on there that we'd all forgot about and probably <laughs> wish it hadn't forgot about. All the I took all the old family photos that I found going through mom and dad's stuff. I mean, photos of my mom and dad at their wedding. Mm. When you look at them and think, holy cow, that's yeah. what they used Who to look that? like. Yeah. So I think that was the best because it, it was a lot of thought I put into it. 
and a lot of time too. Best gift that I've given, who was a kid, I know, because I was a Star Wars kid. Okay. I was seven when Star Wars came out, so okay. that was my world. And I got the the big, um, I wanted it for like two years, and Santa finally brought it to me. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the um the death star yeah it was this huge big play thing and oh goodness that was just i play i i probably still played with that in high school i guess but <laughs> yeah, recently as an adult i can't i don't know i know i've received good gifts but i'm yeah. just i'm just drawing those are the ones that of. stick out those are good yeah that's good um okay a few more then we'll round up um so there's a concept of the 80 20 principle uh pareto's principle uh basically says uh you know, 20% of your actions equal 80% of the results. Yep. Right. So what are the 20% of actions that get you the most results in your business? For me, it's very simple. If I can't answer my phone call, if I'm in a ditch or something, I call people back as quick as I can. Mm. I make appointments and you show up on time. Those two things, I'm in the contracting world. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of bad attitudes about contractors out there. Yeah. Return a phone call show up on time and do the job you're supposed to do that's a small 20 percent but boy does it go a long way towards making people happy and making me successful i agree i definitely agree with that even just doing this uh the radio show like i nine times out of ten i'm pre-recording these shows like we are today yep um because people cancel at the last minute yes and i don't like that and, <laughs> you, and know? you know what life happens <laughs> right but if you're gonna cancel call right say you know what i'm sorry i have to cancel or we're in my line of work i never know how long a job's going to take that's true yeah. so i have rough windows and you got to call and say you know what we're stuck on this other one we're going to be there in an hour or two not 10 minutes like we're supposed to keep people it's very easy to keep your clients informed of what you're doing yep yep um do you feel that your business is your life's calling no i'm not entirely sure what my life's calling is but um, I'm having fun doing sprinklers and I enjoy the work, but definitely not my life's calling. Mm -hmm. Is there a quote that's always been a mantra that you live by? I don't know if it's an actual quote. Um, I never had the great, you know, grandfather who would spin yarns <laughs> and just talked in quotes or anything like that that right. some people have. But I always try to pay attention to the little things. The big things are going to happen whether you want to or not. You can control the little things in the little details on the side. Mm -hmm. Don't miss them. That's the important stuff.